There has been a lot of buzz lately regarding a minor change to the braking system part of Formula 1's technical regulations, which was incorporated in the most recent edition issued at the end of July, and this has now officially hurt Red Bull in their hunt for glory. Or, better said, title defence. This change refers to a single additional sentence introduced to Article January 2nd 11 of the technical regulations. At first, the regulation read that, the brake system must be designed so that within each circuit the forces applied to the brake pads are the same magnitude and act as opposing pairs on a given brake disc. This rule, and the way it is written, implies that the brake pads exert a clamping force on each of the four discs. The real brake balance reading on the steering wheel, which is often between 54% and 58%, represents a proportion of the total braking pressure 100% applied to the front axle. This means there is a variation in clamping force from front to back, but it does not imply that the clamping force on each brake disc across a particular axle must be the same. That sentence remains. But in the new version of the regulations that will be effective from this weekend's Dutch Grand Prix onwards, this has been added. Any system or mechanism which can produce systematically or intentionally asymmetric Braking torques for a given axle is forbidden. This new sentence expresses just what I just said. In actuality, it is known as torque steer. After reviewing the new legislation, this may have been considered a grey area, as there previously appeared to be nothing preventing torque steer. Basically, the FIA is addressing a loophole in the present regulations, something which is said to have been very, very instrumental to Red Bull's cars in recent years. The steering requirements are solely about the steering wheel and how it interacts with the steering rack and, in turn, the front axle, with no allowance for geometric adjustments to the rear suspension, so four-wheel steering is a no-go. The regulations are written by the FIA and F1, and the teams are responsible for optimising their performance within those limits. In certain circumstances, this entails delving into grey areas, which, like with any set of restrictions, will be reduced with time. However, modifying them, as is being done for 2026, would create a whole new set of troubling issues. It's certainly worth mentioning that the new braking restriction was initially included in the 2026 standards with the exact identical phrasing. That occurred in the version released on June 24th. Thus, it's probable that this phrasing originated in the negotiations about the 26 regulations and was then incorporated into the present regulations to strengthen them. When new regulations are implemented, any flaws uncovered in previous ones are often closed. However, a slew of new loopholes are usually established. So based on this new addition to the 2024 rules for the second half of the season, it appears that in those decisions for 2026, it was underlined that there is now nothing covering the torque steer possibilities. So, what is the point of having a system that accomplishes something that is now clearly prohibited? There are obvious advantages to having an offset in terms of braking pressure on either side of the car, especially when coming off the brakes. If one side is slower to relieve pressure than the other, it can cause torque steer allowing the car to rotate. The turn-in phase is critical to any car's performance, and if you can tune it to make the car more responsive into slow corners, where these present ground-effect cars are prone to understeer, that may be critical. Something Red Bull was good at, until they probably had to change it around the time of the Miami GP. Torque steer would be rather simple to implement, since you could use a one-way flow restrictor to reduce the release of braking pressure on one side. It could be done on either the front or rear axles, but the rear would be more useful because the inside rear tyre is not overworked during the turn-in phase. In other words, it permits full braking fluid flow when the pedal is pressed, but inhibits the flow when you release the brakes on one side. This will cause drag on that corner of the car, allowing it to rotate. As a result, you would have to select your issue corners and determine whether they all traveled the same direction, left or right, and configure it accordingly. We don't know for sure if anyone was utilizing a system to induce asymmetric braking, but rule adjustments like this are frequently introduced when a team requests clarification, 
usually due to suspicions or to prevent a team from doing so in the future. Or maybe it just came up as a nice idea when working up the 2026 regulations. If any team was taking use of this possible loophole and can no longer do so, it might have a substantial impact on performance, particularly in slower corners. And in such a competitive sector, that may make a significant difference in the pecking order. And this is exactly what happened to Red Bull in recent months. Around the same time, the question about this particular rule came up. So, people were quick to point a finger to Red Bull for probably utilizing this trick. And just recently, former F1 hopeful Robin Freens has claimed he has also heard the FIA made Red Bull change something on the RB20, and that's responsible for the team losing speed. But he couldn't tell what they found or what rivals complained about. But you can make a guess by now, right? Although Red Bull began the season by following up where they left off in 2023, winning four of the first five races, Max Verstappen has only won three of the past nine Grand Prix. Instead, McLaren has had its period at the top of the timesheets with the quickest car on the grid, while Mercedes has lately emerged victorious, winning three of the previous four races. Red Bull maintains the lead in both championships due to their early season dominance, but McLaren has cut the gap to 42 points in the constructors, while Lando Norris is 78 points behind Verstappen in the driver's standings. With Verstappen on a four-race winless streak coming into his home race in Zandvoort, Freens feels there's more to the issue than just McLaren and Mercedes winning the development battle. What's going on at Red Bull? The Dutchman writes in his Formula One magazine column. In terms of why did they lose so much speed all at once? According to the Spanish media, the FIA discovered a problem or other teams complained about a specific aspect of the Red Bull car, prompting changes. That's why they lost so much speed. I wouldn't be surprised if that's true because, in Formula One, things are fierce between the teams. Everyone is watching each other. That's what makes the sport so much fun, I think. Every team tries to discover the grey areas in every field. Look at Mercedes, who suddenly came up with the DAS system a few years ago. That was a, let's say, dark grey area. But things like that are what make Formula One so interesting. While he maintained his conviction that Red Bull needed to improve something about the car, it will be tough to catch up with the front competitors again. But how could this all happen? According to Dr. Helmut Marco, a Red Bull advisor, it's because the RB20 is a bitch that only Max Verstappen can tame. At the start of the season, we had a car that was as balanced as the McLaren, Marco said. It could handle all tracks and all conditions. Then we took a wrong turn somewhere. The car has become a bitch that only Max can tame. Marco continued. They made the car more and more unpredictable. It became more and more difficult to set it up and balance it. Perez has been nowhere since Red Bull's recent difficulties started, with even Verstappen having encountered struggles in Hungary. Despite being forced to wrestle the RB20, the defending world champion achieved the quickest qualifying time in Austria and Belgium by a significant margin. Marco praised Verstappen's Q3 performances in those two countries, comparing the Austrian team to Mercedes earlier in the season. Those were special qualifying laps from Max, Marco said. In the race, the superiority was gone, like Mercedes. At the beginning of the year, we are sometimes fast and sometimes slow depending on the conditions. Sometimes even in the same race as in Silverstone, where it rained in between. Verstappen has failed to win in his previous four races and has only one podium finish since winning the Spanish Grand Prix. Marco discussed some of the challenges that the three-time world champion has faced. We are better than our last results, Marco claimed. Without the bad pit stop in Spielberg, the collision with Hamilton in Hungary and the grid penalty in Spa, Max would be in a better position. What are your thoughts? Did Red Bull use a grey area trick on their brakes at the start of the season? And had the FIA clamp down resulted in troubles for them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.